Oh, what's up guys? I'm here at Studer. We're in Switzerland, baby. We got a nice lights out machining operation going on right here. This whole setup, the machining is happening. And then you come over here and you got tombstones and pallets like lined up, fixturing all lined up over here. So if we walk around the back of it, ooh, and I love the chips. Ooh, chips, chips, chips. Oh, making some money right there. 200 pallets right here. So pallets, I always say like, I say tombstones because I use tombstones, but it's actually a pallet and you can put the fixed string on and you can design it up however you want to. But if you, when you look inside here, there's 200 um, pallets here, uh, all different types of parts running lights out, machine after machine after machine, utilizing that lights out power right there. Manufacturing 24 seven, you can do it wherever you are in your own countries, boom. It's all about that fixturing right there. So the machine runs lights out. So the operator's job is to inspect the parts and to load the raw materials onto the fixed string. Every single part has its own fixed string on its own tombstone or pallet. The pallets get loaded into the machine. And then based on the schedule that they set, the machine will actually go up and call the pallet where you'll actually have a robot that comes over, grabs the pallet, takes it down, puts it into the machine, the previous part Part comes out, goes into a waiting station for the operator at some point to haul the pallet up so they can actually take off the part, put a new part on, and then it's just a cycle nonstop. So manufacturing in the real world, no matter where you are, you can make your own parts in your own country. If you understand the art of fixturing, you understand the art of making parts efficiently, and you put a system like this in place, full automation, you can actually see all the pallets they're inside this cage right here. And then on the far side, you can see they're on the back wall also. Boom, great system. I always say, you, you can be a machinist and you can learn how to program and do all these different things, but there's three basic things that will make you great. One is setup. Let's set up efficiently, and then let's figure out ways to set up so we don't have to spend all the time every single time we do that job. So let's figure out how to use fixtures and how to lock them into the machine automatically so you take the time and setup out. So when you're a machinist and you can actually think about efficiency in setting parts up and you start using these crazy fixturing techniques to basically just load a fixture, boom, it's automatically set. You load a program, the program loads all offsets for you, takes all the time out. Like that right there is magic. And then I think second thing, one of the most important things as a machinist is fixturing like creating crazy fixturing. You have to outthink, outsmart the competition. And it's super important. So if one guy thinks about, you know, running one side at a time and you can run five sides at a time, you've already run. If one person, guy or girl, puts in a regular vice and runs one or two parts on that vice, but you can put in a crazy fixture, then you run 60 parts, then you're making the company money and you deserve money. That is the art of fixturing. That is a difference right there between being a good machinist and a great machinist is your ability to outthink the machinists and to make brilliant fixturing. The third thing that makes a great machinist is great machinist programmer is programming. Let's take every single tool, find out what its limits are, run it at 80% of those limits, and actually run fast. Let's take the times, if they're 10 minutes, let's get them down to four minutes. If they're 60 minutes, let's get them down to 20 minutes. Let's decrease our cycle times where we still have efficiency, longevity, You know, meaning the tools can actually last for a long time. If you're breaking tools, that's not a good thing. So we wanna program in a way that that we are we are running the part fast and efficient we're making money but we're not breaking tools and sometimes I'll run it a certain amount and maybe have to change out the tool every hour because we're running Monel but that's a risk I'm like hey I'm gonna waste a hundred dollars to make five hundred dollars if I can just get after this and in one hour just take off all this material and I go through inserts or a tool it might make sense to me if 
I'm taking off a huge amount of material. So there is money in that and you gotta figure out what's, what's worth it. If this was gonna take five hours and in five hours I was gonna get one part done or rough and let's say the material is Inconel or Manel. If I could do it in an hour, I would save four hours of machine time. Is that worth the cost of one tool? Maybe, probably. So sometimes you just have to figure it out. And then if you're willing to actually doll up a tool or do something, then you use tool management and say, hey, run that tool for one hour, then go grab tool 20, run tool 20 as tool one and continue the process. And maybe even grab 21, 22 and run them right afterwards. That's tool management. That's something if you guys don't know about it, a lot of the machines have it. And if you put it into use, you start making good money. What's up, Gavin? What's going on? Oh, native uh, Californian. That's right. So your family has a shop. Yeah. And you guys have these machines. Correct. We have uh, six machines. One is in California and our main facility is in Ohio. We have five out there. So what are you doing in Switzerland? Uh, I'm, I'm walking over there and he's like, hey, what's up? And I'm like, what is going on? I mean, he's from the US. Yeah, so I'm doing an internship here. Uh, we have some people here we're friends with that were able to give us an opportunity for me to do seven weeks at Studer. Nice. Uh, able to go through the whole facility, going from the factory to actual uh, montage. And then next week I started customer care, customer center, learning how to sell the machines out in the United States. Awesome. So it's really so cool. So what's, what's your company in the U.S.? Uh, Complete Grinding Solutions. Complete Grinding Solutions. Shout out to you guys. <laughs> ah, Gavin. That's one thing that I love about Studer. 10% of the employees at Studer are in the apprenticeship program. So basically Studer is training them on mills and lathes and grinding machines. Um, we're in the facility right now and it's not small. It's a multi-year program depending on what they're doing. And then they actually go to work for Studer full time and have a lifelong career working at one of the greatest grinding companies in the world, period. Boom. Ooh, I love just parts after parts after parts. And this section, you see the gentleman, this guy over here, he's actually scraping. So again, when we were at Magerlay, we actually saw that they machine and grind surfaces. Then they come in to get it super perfect and they hand scrape. And they do the same thing over here at Studer. This is the scraping department. Complete workmanship, complete quality, complete rigidity, hand scraping so the surface is absolutely perfect. And nobody can do it better than a human. So when these parts just go together, everything is perfect, everything is rigid, which gives you the ability to hit those crazy tolerances. So good.